Hello and welcome to Skills and Automation. My name is Ash and today we are going to look at how to lock and unlock a workbook, a worksheet and a specific area within a worksheet. I like to use this technique to protect the integrity of the worksheet and the data. Let me explain. So suppose we want the user to fill out a standard template and our intention is to read that template programmatically. If we send them a normal Excel file, they could tamper that file by deleting some data adding a filter or hiding some rows. That would make it difficult for VBA to read through the returned file. Hence, in such cases, we can prepare a file where everything except the input areas is locked and send it to the user. They can then fill out that template and send it back to us. And now we can get VBA to confidently read through the file, knowing that no aspect of it has been tampered with. In fact, I'll be posting a full workflow video in this context where we send out log files to users, collect their responses and reconcile it back to our original data set. So do watch out for that video. This video though is a standalone video where we'll cover the various aspects of locking and unlocking files and worksheets. So first up, let's look at how to lock a file or an Excel workbook and then open that locked workbook through VBA. Let's look at a worksheet. We have some data here in our worksheet. We're going to copy and paste over this data into a new workbook and save that file with the password. Let's go to the VBA editor, Alt F11, create a new module and let's create a sub. We'll save the file that we're going to create in the same folder as this macro file. We can grab our current folder path using this workbook.path. Let's first declare a variable to hold the file path and assign it the value of this workbook.path. Let's declare some variables for the new workbook, worksheet and file name. Let's create a new workbook and assign it to this workbook variable as we open the new workbook. And let's assign sheet one in the new workbook to this worksheet variable. And let's copy our data range over to the new worksheet. So this is just the worksheet code name of our data worksheet. And we'll just copy the current region and paste it into cell A1 in the new worksheet. So let's assign a name to a new file. We'll call a new file locked file. However, while saving it, we need to supply the full file path, which is the folder path of our current workbook. And don't forget the backslash. And let's save the file now. Give the file name. We'll save it in the XLSX format. And this is where you get to allocate a password. So this will be the password to open our file. And let's close the workbook. Okay, let's test the code. First, let's just check the folder on our computer. This is our macro and this is our current folder path. So our file is gonna be saved out here. Run the macro, go back to the folder and we can see our file has been saved. Let's open it and we are being prompted for a password. Type the password in, okay, and our data has been saved correctly. Okay, now let's open the same file through BBA. Back to our code, we'll build a new sub for this, make some space. So our task is to open the file that we had locked and saved previously. So let's grab the folder path. I'm just gonna copy and paste in code that we have already previously seen. So the file path is the path of our current workbook and we can grab the file name as well. And let's assign the file name. Don't forget the extension. Let's open the workbook. So we'll assign this workbook variable to the file that we are about to open. Provide the file name. And let's provide the password. Actually, let's try opening it without the password and see what happens. Okay, let's just try and open the workbook as is. Play this macro and we are prompted for a password. Macro will error out if we hit cancel, which is fine. So let's feed in the password and let's try and open the file now. The file is opened and we weren't prompted for a password. Great, let's move on to locking and unlocking sheets. In this section, we'll perform the same operation as previous, but instead of locking the file, we lock the worksheet. We'll also look at one more option where we open a file with a locked worksheet, unlock it, edit some data, lock it back and close the file. So back to our code. In the first sub, let's just save a file with a locked worksheet. So just to be clear, 
we are not going to lock the file. We're just going to lock the worksheet that we are pasting data into. Create a sub. And it's pretty much the same code as last time, except the part where we lock the worksheet. So let's just copy this over. We'll just make two changes. First up, we will put a lock on this worksheet dot product. And we need to provide a password. And since we're not locking the file itself, we can remove the password parameter. Let's run this macro. Let's open it. So we weren't prompted for a password when opening the file, but let's just try and edit one of these cells and we're not able to do so. So great, everything's working well. Moving on to the next task. So now we're gonna open the same file, unlock the sheet and edit a cell. Create a new sub, put in some space. We can again reuse the previous code for opening the file. Let's just take this and paste it into a new sub. We don't need to provide the password. Let's declare a worksheet variable and assign it to sheet one. Okay, so what we're gonna do is edit cell A1 in this sheet that we're about to open. We'll just change the background color to red. First, we need to unlock the sheet, edit the cell, and then lock it back. We'll use the unprotect method of the worksheet object. It's asking us for a password, which is the same password that we had given up here. And let's edit cell A1. So we're just changing the background color to red. And let's lock the sheet back up. Just copy this code, paste it back in, save the changes to a workbook and close the workbook. Okay, let's play out our code. Go back to our folder, open the file. Our cell A1 is now red and the worksheet is still locked. Before we move on, let's look at one more scenario. Now, let's imagine there is large amounts of data in this file. In fact, let me show you what I mean. Okay, so I've added in some more data. Suppose we're sending this file to a user we would be able to provide a better experience to the user if we could just keep filters on the top and lock the rest of the file. Let's try and do this manually first. So the way to do it would be to come to our worksheet tab, right click, go to unprotect sheet, and let's lock it back, protect sheet. So while protecting worksheets, we have a few options out here that we can provide to the user while still keeping the rest of the data locked. The one that we are interested in is use auto filter, and I'll leave it to you to explore the rest. But before we turn this on, we need to actually add in our filters. So cancel, select the columns, control shift L, come back to our worksheet tab, protect sheet, turn on auto filter, provide the password and re-enter the password. Okay, the worksheet is still locked, but we can still filter our data, which is pretty cool. So let's do this programmatically. So back to our macro file, I have increased the size of our previous data set so that we need to scroll down below to reach the end. And we're gonna save this data in a new file, lock the worksheet, but still allow the user to filter data. Go back to our code, come down. Let's create a new sub. We'll just use this same initial code to save the workbook and lock the worksheet. Paste it below. We're just gonna make two changes. After we paste the data, and before we lock our worksheet, we'll add in a row where we add in the filters. So turn on the auto filter. And while we're locking the worksheet, we'll add in one more parameter that is allow filtering is equal to true. Okay, let's run this code. My bad, we need to apply auto filter on the range and not the worksheet. Let's stop and play this again. Come to our folder, open the workbook. The data has been saved. The worksheet is locked, but we can still filter on the data. Cool. Moving on in the final section, let's look at how to allow the user to access or edit parts of the worksheet while keeping the rest of the worksheet locked. So now what we're going to do is create a new column called comments in the last column of data when saving it. And we'll allow the users to edit cells in this column, but only as far as the data range extends. Let's code this in. We have a sub here and we can just reuse the code from our first sub when locking a worksheet. Copy and paste it in. So after we paste in the data, let's do a couple of things. 
first let's add a column header so we're adding a header into cell f1 we'll give the header name comments and the idea here is that the user should be able to add in some free text as comments against the rows of data next we need to know how far the data range extends so let's find the last row the last row will just be the count of the total rows in the current region and now we'll set the lock property of this range of cells within column f as false this means that when we eventually lock the worksheet these cells will remain unlocked so the data range goes from the second row to the last row and we'll set the locked property to false and the rest of the code remains the same we'll go on and lock the worksheet and save the file okay let's run this code go and check out a file so a new column has been added the worksheet is still locked but let's come to the data range within column F and we are able to add in some free text. Great. Okay, so there is one thing that I missed out mentioning when it comes to logging worksheets. If we were to send this file as is to a team member, expecting them to fill out their comments in column F, we will land up making that team member extremely frustrated. So there is nothing wrong with the code that we have covered so far. We just need to add one thing. Let me show you. The dates are not visible in the first column. And the obvious reason for this is that the length of the date field exceeds the default column width. And if the user receiving the file doesn't have the password to unlock it, they won't be able to increase this column width. So to create a better user experience, we should autofit the columns before locking them. Let's go to our code. Come to the part after we have pasted the data. And we can add in our code anywhere before we finally lock our worksheet. So let's add the autofit method to the columns object. And that's it. Let's run our code now. File has been created. Let's open the file. Yes, that definitely looks better. And if you wanted to go the extra mile, you could add a custom width to column F if you're expecting the comments to be quite lengthy. But I'll leave that to you to explore. And I'll make sure that I add this autofit code when I post these files and code online. And that was the video. We saw how to lock and open locked files and worksheets. As I'd mentioned at the start of the video, we'll be relying heavily on this technique when we do a project to send and receive responses. Please check that video out if you're interested. And I'll put the link in the description below. And that's it from me. I'll see you in the next video.